Thanks for that. And uh, keep your <laughs> comments at home coming as well, please. Uh, now, hay fever. Beautiful weather at the weekend. But I know for a lot of people going outside gets absolutely ruined in the summer by the dreaded hay fever. And apparently there is an epidemic. Front page of the Express today, hay fever hell, it says, as Britain uh, hots up, soaring pollen count. And it's going to get worse, apparently. And uh, the double the amount of people now seeking help from their GPs. Uh, fortunately, I'm very pleased to say I'm not suffering, but my son is. Mm. In fact, I've kept him off school today. It's so bad and he's really bunged up and headachy and hot and awful. Are you a sufferer? Mm. I'm not, but Jake is my yeah. son terrible. I mean, dread, like dreads the summer yeah. every year because it totally affects his life for weeks and weeks on end. And exam times and night, yeah. isn't it? And uh, well, it was when he was doing yeah. it was awful when he was doing his exams, yeah. actually. But also, he's tried absolutely everything you can possibly try. Um, off the shelves and all of that, nothing. and just nothing. I know you just were suffer when you were young. Yeah, you no, I, I still get it now. Although I would say it's probably slightly better as I've got older. But literally, I think about the age of four, I developed it. And really, you, you mentioned that. exams. It's just hideous for hay fever sufferers. And I, I remember being put into a different room to do my maths O level. That's why I say did so badly. That's what I told my mother <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> because I was just sneezing. I was like achoo, achoo, and I was, I was distracting everybody. So I got moved into a, a different room. But it is hideous, and particularly as a girl, you can't wear makeup when mm. you when you know when you're a teenager because your face just streams, everything rolls down. And I remember um, years and years ago, I remember a sci-fi program or a science program called Tomorrow's World, and there was a, a, a thing. Someone else said, oh, oh, yeah. that in the audience. Yeah, yeah. Right. And they did a kind of a, they said, oh, you know, cure for hay fever, and I was so excited. I said to my mum, oh my god, they found a cure for hay fever. Well, this thing, honestly, it was the. I think we've got a clip from. Um, it was on TVAM as well look, oh. look. <laughs> literally <laughs> and this is tvam like a goldfish bowl with like a hoover attachment <laughs> at the back of it <laughs> I was absolutely crestfallen. Mind you, if you, if you were desperate, you'd probably that just be happy to wear it, wouldn't you, if it I worked. thought I'd rather have makeup all down my face than have to walk around with that. <laughs> do you get it, Claire? I do get it. And uh, it's always been relatively mild, but we moved house last July, and the shock of... Come April, when all the tree pollen was out, I couldn't even leave the house. Mm. I looked, my face swelled up so much. You know that film, The Goonies? <laughs> the character in The Goonies, that's what I looked like. My eyes were all kind of popping out and swollen and... It's just awful. Mm. So I'd lived in the same place for 35 years and moving somewhere completely different, it totally threw me. Mm. It was so, so bad. And I, it's and very it's debilitating, actually. It's, really? Yeah. And it's almost like because we've had sort of quite weird weather this year, it, it suddenly you get people who've never suffered before yeah. kind of going, oh, I'm, I'm feeling a bit hay fevery. And if I you think don't it brings know, in a new you, kind of pollen yeah, or something. Yeah, the weird symptoms, I think, that you probably wouldn't associate necessarily with like, it, even the insides of my ears itch and i'm sure mm. that's all hay fever yeah. as well have you Scratch been washing your, your ears claire <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> People love to tell you about remedies, mm. don't they? And I'm always interested to hear. Um, Emma on Facebook, I have heard this one, Emma. She said eating local honey is meant to work, but when she says local, it has to be within a five-mile radius. Oh, see, I've, I've told tried three that. miles. Oh, you told yeah, three I've miles. Tried, have you tried yeah. that? No. I can't... I don't like honey. It makes me... Um, <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, uh, Scott, I suffer with hay fever and it never ruins my summer. I have honey on toast every morning and it always cures my hay fever. So, uh, honey is yeah. The only thing that worked for me is having an, in uh, which you have to pay for, um, is having an injection in my glutimus maximus, or whatever it's called, particularly maximus in my case. <laughs> Um, and that, that works, but only for about four weeks. See, I didn't know anything completely. about that you could have an injection. I would... get that on the NHS. No, you can't. Um, no. um, we've got Lindsay McManus on the phone. Are you there, Lindsay? Yes, I am. Hi yes, there. Um, and Lindsay is the deputy CEO from Allergy UK, which is a patient information organisation. Is that right? That's right, yes. Um, do you have a hay fever yourself, Lindsay? I don't, but a bit like you, my son has very bad hay fever and he's a PE teacher, so it's extremely oh. difficult. It's outside all the time and it's been miserable this yeah. year, absolutely miserable. And what about your helpline? You know, because they're saying that um, it, it, the pollen is really high at the moment, so are you noticing more and more people calling? We are, absolutely, and, and trying to find ways that they can... Exactly what you were saying, they've tried things over the counter, mm. they've tried the, you know, the, the local remedies and things like that. It's not working. What can they do to, to make a difference this year? And it has been particularly bad this year. The weather's been very warm, very windy, and we had a warm, wet, mild winter, which gives ideal, ideal growing for the plants, and it's all gone, all gone mad this year. And set to get worse, according to the Met Office, because they're saying uh, temperatures are expected to reach 77 degrees in some places this yeah. week in the pollen. Uh, we're in the grass pollen season now, as you were saying, so it's 
people are out there cutting their lawns. It's been very dry, and as soon as you know, they start cutting the lawns. It's a bit warm. It's a bit windy, so all the pollens are released, and and it's a it's a nightmare. It's, a, it's very underestimated condition, I think. Mm. Yeah. What and about it makes people lives miserable? Apart from putting a goldfish bowl on your head, like we saw there. <laughs> but what about remedies that you know people that call you or, or advice that you're giving? I mean, obviously, if it's very bad, I'm presuming you say go and see your GP. But there are okay. anything that you find works particularly well for people? Yeah, absolutely. I think the thing is, a lot of people don't take their medications correctly. They'll take their antihistamines a bit ad hoc. If it's just a bad day, they'll, they'll take a pill then rather than taking them regularly right the way through. Mm, um, nasal do. sprays are often used incorrectly. So instead of spraying them to the outside of your nose, so the actual inside of your nose is treated with the medication, it goes straight up your nose, straight down the back of your throat, into your tummy, doesn't do any good. So people think they don't work uh, properly. And because children, they're not using um, I saw a nasal spray actually being advertised. Can children use nasal sprays? Um, I, I'm not a medic, but I mean, if you spoke to your GP or if you yeah. spoke to your pharmacist, they would be able to give you the right ones for suitable ages. But sometimes it's practical things as well. You know, wearing wraparound sunglasses when you're outside. There's pollen barrier balms that you can just put on the inside of your nose now that traps the pollen when you're out and about. Washing your hair and changing your clothes when you come in so you're not taking all those pollens into your, your bedroom where you're sleeping. So causing symptoms all through the night, making you, you know, get up in the morning. As you say, you're all bunged up and feeling dreadful. Get undressed at the front door then. Strip off. That's it. <laughs> Strip Drop off when you come in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Lindsay, and uh, I hope your son gets through the summer OK. That's not a great job, is it, having a PE teacher with no, really bad no. hay fever. But thank you very much for all your advice. And as um, Lindsay said there, and we said, obviously, if your symptoms are very bad, um, get to the see your GP. We should put Any some, helpful um, advice we, we, we should point out one positive thing about um, hay fever, is there's been a couple of American studies that say that um, children who suffer from hay fever are 40% less likely to get leukaemia. Oh, really? And adults that suffer from hay fever are 30% less likely to get um, ovarian cancer. There's lower rates. Because you produce more histamine. It's, the, it, it's about the immune system and, yeah, and producing more histamine. And, um, yeah, so phew, mm. there are some upsides. So there's a silver lining <laughs> yeah. to that cloud. Thank you very much for your comments. And any of your, um, your kind of homemade cures and things that you think work for you, do let us know. We're very interested. Uh, competition.